Hundreds of thousands of kittens are being killed in U.S. animal shelters every single year. And most people don't even realize that kittens are a primary population being euthanized in our shelter system. Now, this does not happen because shelters want to be killing kittens. It's a very complex, systemic problem. But there is a solution. In this video, I'm going to share why kittens die in shelters and what we can do to make it stop. I recently saw a post online about a group of five little black kittens who were going to be euthanized if no one stepped up to foster them. This is just the reality. Neonatal kittens who end up in animal shelters generally have only one of two options. Either they find a foster parent who is willing to take them home that same day, or they are euthanized, often the same day. I really hoped that somebody else would step up to foster them, but when nobody did, I offered to take them in myself, and so here they are behind me. They're doing great. They have grown so much, and I'm so happy that they're here, but I'm honestly so scared for what's coming this spring. Kitten season is around the corner, and if kittens are already having this hard of a time finding foster homes now, that means that in a few months when kittens are absolutely pouring into shelters, they're all going to be in largely the same boat. If they can't find a foster home, they will be euthanized. And this happens all across the United States. No matter what state you live in, kittens are at risk there. So why does this happen? Well, let's start with the basics. Cats are an altricial species. That means they are born defenseless and totally dependent on their mothers for food, warmth, even help going to the bathroom. But unfortunately, so much of the time, kittens become separated from their moms because people find them outside and assume they've been abandoned, even if the mom is nearby. So many people want to be a hero and do the right thing. So when they find that kitten outside, they assume, oh my gosh, I need to scoop them up and bring them to an animal shelter. That's how I can be helpful. These kittens end up in shelters under the premise that they'll be safe there, when in reality, most shelters don't have the resources to support these kittens. So the first way we can help is to keep kittens from entering the shelter to begin with. And how do we keep kittens from coming to the shelter to begin with? Well, we start by spaying and neutering so that fewer kittens are being born, especially spaying and neutering the community cat colonies that are in our neighborhoods. These are the cats who are producing 80% of the kittens born every single year. So we wanna spay and neuter not just the cats who live in our homes, but also the cats who live in our communities. And then for those kittens who are born, we want to only scoop them up if they are truly orphaned, injured, sick, or otherwise in danger, or if we have an abundance of resources to support the kitten, but in that case, we also wanna be, of course, supporting the full family. Now, this gets really complex, but don't worry, I have a lot of resources to share with you on this. I'll link below to some videos and educational literature on how to sterilize community cats, as well as what to do if you find a kitten. So moving on from prevention, let's talk about what kittens actually need. Neonatal kittens require around-the-clock care, if not from their mother, then from a human caregiver. If they end up in an animal shelter without their mama, they're going to need specialized care every few hours. But the vast majority of shelters don't have staff who are trained to do this care especially not overnight care staff. You see, shelters have operating hours just like any other business. So if they close at 6 p.m. and there's no one there until 8 a.m., it's actually incredibly unethical to keep a neonatal kitten there overnight. And that's why these kittens, if they don't have somewhere to go, they end up being euthanized before the day even ends. For orphaned neonatal kittens in shelters, it's truly a race against the clock. They're looking for somebody who says, yes, I'm willing to pick them up and take them home and foster them. And this race against the clock is even more dire for the kittens who come in at the end of the day. There are more than 3,500 brick and mortar animal shelters in the United States. And so I think a lot of people feel like there's so many shelters, certainly this is an issue that can be resolved within the four walls of a shelter. But you should know that less than 1% of shelters have overnight kitten nursery programs. It's actually incredibly, incredibly rare to have that kind of program. So you can safely assume that in the community where you live, if neonatal kittens are entering the shelter, they're being euthanized unless there is a community of foster parents 
who are willing to support them. Now you might say, okay, well, let's just get more kitten nurseries. Let's just put more kitten nurseries into shelters. But not only is this enormously cost prohibitive and not possible for the majority of shelters, but it's also not particularly safe for the kittens. See, kittens don't really belong in an animal shelter. They have underdeveloped immune systems and are usually unvaccinated or under vaccinated. So in a high volume setting, they become exposed to so much disease that can make them incredibly sick. And then they can die or be euthanized. So even for weaned kittens who can make it overnight in a shelter, it's still not a very safe place for them to be. So these kittens have just one lifeline and that's ordinary people signing up to foster. It's not experts, it's not professionals, it's not people who went to school to help animals. This is about everyday, inexperienced people saying, you know what, I've never fostered a kitten before, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to try, I'm willing to help. We desperately need more people to believe in themselves and to not just love kittens from afar or watch them online, but to actually say, you know what, this is the year I'm going to sign up to foster. There are so many reasons that people don't foster. You know, a lot of people think that they don't have enough room to foster. Well, all you need room for is a little playpen. That's actually more room than a kitten would be given in a shelter kennel if they are lucky enough to stay alive in a shelter kennel at all. So popping up a little playpen in the corner of your living room is an incredible gift to give kittens to save their lives. A lot of people worry about money, but shelters provide all of that veterinary care for free. And many of them also provide all of the supplies. Shelters want and need this to be easy. They're going to provide you the education, the support, the vet care, the things that you need to be successful because shelters do not want to be killing kittens. You know, this is an issue that starts in the community and this is an issue that can be resolved by the community. We can't solve this problem within the four walls of a shelter that closes for the night. It's just not possible. So shelters are dependent on people like us. We are the lifeline. So many people say the only reason they don't foster is because they're worried that they would fall in love. So if that is you, I want to challenge you on that a little bit. My question for you is this, what does love mean to you? If this is the only thing holding you back, try to remember that love is not about ownership. Love is about seeing someone for who they are, having empathy for them, and trying to surround them with support and improve their lives. It's about wanting them to be safe and okay. If you love kittens, that's amazing. You are the person that kittens need. And we need you to take that love out of your heart and put it into your hands and put it to work. Even if it's just one litter a year that you do. You know, there's so many awesome people out there who just foster one time over the summer and that makes a huge difference. You don't have to be the kitten lady. You don't have to fill your home with kittens or have an incubator. You don't need any of that. If you have space in your heart and your home to just have a little playpen that you pop up once or twice a year to help out kittens, that makes all the difference. If you're watching this video, it is because you love kittens and you want them to be safe and okay. But you guys, kittens are not safe and they're not okay. They are so vulnerable in our shelters and I'm so afraid for this kitten season because I think it's gonna be rough. We've had a hard couple of years with the pandemic, with vet shortages, people returning to work, people feeling like they can't foster as much. If you're in a position to really meet this moment and help out in whatever way you can, please, please do that. Even if that's you and you have gone back to work and you're not home for eight hours a day, that's okay. Can you foster a mom and babies? Can you do weaned kittens? Can you help out if you have a summer break? We need to get as many hands on deck this year as possible. We need people who are willing to babysit for just a couple of weeks. It's truly a short-term commitment with such a long-term impact. If you're thinking about fostering this year, but you just need that extra push, Tell me in the comments what's holding you back. I would love to help point you in the right direction. 
Don't forget that I have tons of resources for whatever way you like to learn, whether that's through videos, through webinars, I have my audio book, I have my book, Tiny But Mighty, and tons of articles at kittenlady.org to teach you what you need to know. This is so important to me. You know, 15 years ago when I got started, there were not even foster programs in most shelters. Now shelters have the programs, but they need the people power. And I've worked really hard to create the resources that I wish I had when I was getting started. I even founded a nonprofit orphan kitten club, which is providing grants to shelters to make these programs possible. And, you know, I'm trying to think about different ways that I can push the needle on this issue all the time and empower people to help and help shelters do this work. And hey, please consider reaching out to your local shelter. All it takes is contacting them and getting signed up. And don't worry, you don't have to do anything more than you can do, but every single piece does make a difference. Thank you.